Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing Goldmund in the 5-Minute Pool on ICC. This is Alexander Rustamov. Been a while since I played him. Um, I'm actually going to play e4 and then play d4 and try to transpose into uh, this Meroxy bind. Let's go knight c2. This just preserves more pieces, keeps more tension in the position. I don't want to play knight c3 yet for fear that he might play bishop takes c3. So right now we're kind of in a waiting game about who's going to flinch first. Um, I need to play a constructive move, though. What could my constructive move be? Like queen d2? That looks so awkward. I will not be playing queen d2. Um, I mean, knight c3, bishop takes c3 is not the end of the world. Especially now that his queen cannot come out to a5. So I'll just do it. And if he wants to take on c3, that's fine. Because a lot of the times, like the compensation they get uh, for... I'll do this to stop him from castling. A lot of times the compensation they get for making this bishop take c3 trade, which I kind of sense that he did. Oh, I totally didn't see that pawn was hanging. Um, is that they get their queen out to a5. And as I elaborate about this point, um, I am just dropping stuff. <laughs> okay, so now I have to play for compensation. This should be fun. Um, bishop f3. Let's see. What else would do? Bishop f3 has 95. That's what I fear. Mm, might be okay. I could play knight e3 maybe, but he just takes on c3. So that's no good. Let's go bishop f3 and just see how he plays. Needless to say, I'm not thrilled about this position now. I have bishop g7 if I want it, maybe. Maybe that's my best practical try, but first I think I should play knight e3, so I'll do that. Assign this knight to guard the c4 pawn. Now we'll attempt to catch up on the clock. Can't believe I didn't see knight takes e4 on move 11. I was focused on trying to stop him from castling. Okay, so what if I play f4? f4, knight takes c4, I have queen d4 is the nice point. So there's that. Um, if queen d4 right away, well, that can also be considered. Actually, queen d4 right away, what is he going to do? Because then I play f4 on the next move. Uh huh. Let's do that. Maybe he can play f5. Yeah, that's what he can do. Because if f5, then f4, he has knight f7. We'll see if he finds that. Bishop d3. He can do that too. But I can go rook here. And hopefully win two minors. Yeah, let's do it. I think he had f5 in the previous position. It's getting messy. Good chance I'll get my material back, I think, though. Question is, how many pawns will he have for it? <laughs> and how bad will my position be? Because structure-wise, I'm not doing great. And the position's obscure. It's a little random. There's pieces hanging, like undefended bishop out here. It's not pretty for both of us. Okay, I guess I'll play this. <laughs> That's creative. That's pretty funny. And good. A good move for him, too. I didn't see that idea. Um, I guess I'll move my king. And try to threaten to take the bishop. It's the only decent thing I see right now. Yeah, and he's going to allow me to do that. Okay. Check. All right. Um, maybe I go king e2. Is there value in that move? 
I think so. Just so I don't have to withdraw my queen from its nice diagonal. I'm going to get this piece no matter what. I'd also like my bishop not to become trapped. Um, okay, let's do this. He wants to trade, huh? Let's go h4. Just so he can't play g5 and trap our bishop. This is a, what a weird position. What a weird position. Get stranger and stranger. Okay, so now I'm actually going to be able to trade some stuff off. He dropped his queen. Yes, I break out of the blitz slump. <laughs> I will take that win. I don't care if Goldman dropped his queen. It does not matter to me. <laughs> it's funny because I saw him make a pretty gross blunder against uh, Chess Explained recently as well. So. Maybe Goldmoon is prone to missing stuff every once in a while. Even Grandmasters are human. But actually, after Queen d5, I, I don't know what's going on because, um, let's back up a second. So Queen d5, if he takes, Check. first of all, which way should I take? Probably with the pawn. Then he moves his rook somewhere. Let's say rook g8. I take here. That's nah, messy. Material-wise, it's dead equal. He has an extra pawn, but I have two minor pieces. I don't know who's better. No clue. He has a pretty compact pawn structure, so usually you'd prefer the two minor pieces, but in this case, I don't know. Black might even be slightly better. Engine seems to think so. Well, let's have a look from the beginning. So, usually I play knight c3 or g3 in this position, but I used to play e4 in this line, so that's what I did in this game. Uh, Bishop e3 is completely playable here. I just played knight c2 because I think it's interesting. The lines with bishop e3 have been very thoroughly studied. Um, one system that's known to almost equalize for black is the following. Um, d6, bishop e2, castle, castle. Um, bishop d7, queen d2, knight takes d4, bishop takes d4, bishop c6, f3, um, and now knight d7. So offering a bishop for bishop trade. Is it knight 7 or a5 first? I can never remember. One of those two moves. Um, but basically, black tries to seek a, a dark square bishop trade, and white should preserve their bishop and go back to e3, but it's very close to equal. So I don't think white has so much of an advantage. And there's some other systems, too, involving, like I know Greg Shahadi plays a system involving an earlier knight takes d4 in this line that can be problematic sometimes. Although, actually, I don't think it's possible via this move order. But anyways, I digress. Um, basically, knight c2 is designed to keep more pieces on the board. Now, after d6, if I play knight c3 right away, then he can do what he did in the game, except it's even more active for him because he hasn't played b6. So he could bring his queen out to a5. In this position, I know is not good for white. I think black's a little bit better here. The pawn structure is compromised. So that's why we were having this like little shadow dance, shadow boxing, whether he was going to play knight f6 first, or whether I was going to play knight c3 first. Because I would love it for him to play knight f6 so I can follow with knight c3 when he doesn't have the option of bishop takes c3. But I thought about it a little bit, and I couldn't find like a useful move in this position to make in the meantime. And he might continue his waiting tactics too, I never know. So I was like, you know what, let's just bite the bullet and do this. If I can't stop him from castling here, though, I don't know if I like this position for white. So I know I lost a pawn by playing bishop h6, but maybe it's one of my better practical chances because, yeah, f3 and then castles, I know I have the dark squares, but structurally, we should shed a tear for white's position because these pawns are so bad. I mean, I don't think you can really defend the c4 pawn in the long run. It's that bad of a piece. So but white has to rely on their dark square counterplay. I mean, this dark square bishop suddenly becomes the MVP 
if I lose this bishop for no reason or just trade it indiscriminately, I'm going to have a bad position. Because this is the only piece I can point to and say, ha, I have control of the dark squares using this, and you do not. So after this, I blundered the e4 pawn, but actually didn't turn out that bad. Here, take, take, knight e3 just to defend c4. Yeah, and he maybe he should take some more care here and play move like the computer suggesting, f6, fortifying the knight, also blocking up this diagonal, allowing knight f7. Also, g5 later might be an issue to trap this bishop. So, queen c7, I'm, I'm glad I found queen d4. This is probably the only move that gives me chances. Yeah, and f5, the computer finds it too, but f5 would have been a good resource because if f4, knight f7 holds the rook on h8, shuts down my entire idea. So f5 he had to play. Instead he did this, I played rook fd1. I guess even that's not necessary, rook fe1. That way I can stop his bishop from coming here. Um, I wonder if he could have played this as in the game, bishop f3. Uh, it doesn't quite have the same effect though because I don't have a rook on d2, so when I play king h1 threatening to take him, uh, this threat is not as significant because he would only be attacking my queen. There's no fork. It's interesting. There's some cool tactics going on. But yeah, rook f e1 would have been better. I totally did not see bishop f3 at all. So this move completely escaped my attention. Huh. The engine's saying I shouldn't do what I did in the game. It says bishop g7, rook g8, bishop takes e5 is better. And then d e, and then just move the queen away. Wow. So then I'm really threatening to win the bishop, so presumably he has to move it, and then I can take on h7. Weird position. So white has regained the pawn. It's equal material. Maybe black's king is in limbo, because white likes white so much here. I'm sorry I'm ref referring to the engine a lot in the analysis, but this is one type of game and tactically unclear position where just me trying to draw conclusions myself in this limited amount of time we have to analyze is not going to work too well. So I kind of have to refer to the engine. Hmm. So if he retreats his bishop now, and I play f4, what is the catch? Why is he not losing material? Castle's queenside. Huh. <laughs> the hits just keep on coming. Castle's queenside. And if take and take, if I move my queen to h4, he could take on d2, so it's a discovered attack. I do have check, check, though, but after f5, of course check. the computer is showing complete equality where no human would ever look at this position and say, oh, yeah, this is dead equal. Can't you see that black's activity in pawns counterbalance white ac white's extra piece? <laughs> That's ridiculous. But the computer sees some route to equality, rough equality. Wow. Very tactically rich game. Honestly, this is a game that probably deserves more um, individual study. I, I'm not going to go too in-depth to it, but you can see already from this cursory analysis that there's quite a bit going on here. Practically every move, him and I are missing something. That's what happens in very irrational, tactically convoluted positions. And knight d5 didn't consider that in-between move at all. Probably should have. It's nice though, I get my knight to a good square with tempo. So if he takes my queen, I take on c7 with check and I win. He can take on d2, but I assume I'm taking with the bishop so as not to lose this pawn. And white's a little bit better. Probably has a small initiative. Okay. So I went here. He took on d2. I played king e2. This is a nice wrinkle. I just wanted to keep my king on the or my queen on this active post. That's what I was striving for by taking the time to go capture with the king. And here, queen f7 is really good for some reason. Maybe because my knight is coming into d5, and there's strong pressure on f6 and e7. That makes sense. And he can't go to f8 because my bishop does a good job of guarding that square. Wow. I played h4. I was worried about g5, as I said. He could have played that move on the previous move, couldn't he? Take g5. Apparently this is still strong. I mean... When he plays g5, it's not like he can immediately win the bishop, but it just it puts its future in, in jeopardy. 
So that's why it had me so concerned. But yeah, this queen f7 move, intending this and possibly even rook e1 if necessary, that would have been a nice idea. e6. He's got a lot of pawns on the 6th rank now. I kept the queens on because I felt like his king could be in more jeopardy than mine. And also, I'm down on the clock, so I wanted to keep it... This is going to sound weird, but I actually wanted to keep it more complex because I felt like with this material distribution, a queenless middle game will be harder for him to play than a queen's off end game, if that makes sense. I think it's easier for him to navigate. It's easier, or it's harder for me to navigate, too, when... Uh, we have the queens on the board, but if I can make him think for any significant amount of time, it'll be worth it. Queen f3 is probably okay as he played now. I didn't see knight g4. That might have been good. Whoops. Went too far. I played rook f1. Now this bishop g7 seems to be fine. Now he just made an egregious blunder. Under his queen. We've all been there. Yeah, so if he takes on d5, the computer says, oh, roughly equal again. We should just shake hands and go home because it's 0.00. .00. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, completely unclear position. I don't know how it finds equality in this because to me, this just looks completely unbalanced. I'm looking at the engine line right now. It's not even a perpetual or anything. This just always amazes me. The computer is just dead equal. It doesn't move. The eval doesn't move. I think it's probably because this is a slightly weaker engine. This is like a um, Stockfish 2.3.1. is like the default engine ICC comes with. But some of these stronger engines, like Stockfish 6 or whatever is out now, with a greater depth, might find a bigger advantage here for one side or the other. Wow, crazy, crazy game. All right, well, that was a nice way to break my losing streak in Blitz. And if you have any feedback on this one against Goldmund, please leave it in the comments. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll be back tomorrow with another Blitz video. Bye.